something from like your grandmother's house and this tree that came down or this tree that you ran around or had a tree fort in and now you can't be in it, but you can sit around it for dinner. Like there's, oof. Yeah. All my marketing, my marketing spidey senses are going off right now. <laughs> Every day, like when I started this, I didn't realize like, hey, by the way, you got to learn how to video edit and you got to learn how to market. And you got to do this shit like. You mean you didn't start a business to go do marketing for it? No. I, Hold I on. What <laughs> the shit is that? Hey there, Parker here from Prime Edge Media alongside Alicia James with Flamingo Consulting. And welcome back to Michigan Marketing in the Morning. So this is our very first virtual episode, so this could be a total shit show, and we have no idea, but nonetheless, uh, what we do on the show is we bring on small local entrepreneurs who are mission-driven and want to grow, and we have them sit down and talk about their story, or in this case, over Zoom, and um, you know talk about what they do, how they're different, and ultimately, what they're trying to do with their business. And then we take a deep dive into their marketing and give them a full six to 12 month marketing plan that they can either choose to execute afterward or can have us help with. Or so utterly ignore, honestly. You can or, actually tell us to go to hell. It's really up to you. Well, that works too. Um, <laughs> but but we'd, we'd encourage the, the first two. We do. So um, today we are here with Cody Powers from Caps Artistry. And um, Cody, I'm just going to let you talk about what it is that you do and what makes you different. And we'll get into it. All right. Well, like you said, I'm Cody Powers from Caps Artistry. I uh, appreciate you guys having me on here today. Um, you know, a quick little backstory on me. I uh, was doing high-end cabinetry for about seven years. And the past year and a half, I started doing like side decor, little things on Etsy. And then I started getting really busy. And then um, as of July 3rd, so this week, a few days, I will be... Um, one my one year anniversary for my LLC. But what I'm doing now is more custom furniture, higher end, not really messing around with the decor because busting my ass hours after hours and not really making any money. And plus it just got boring. I like doing more of the challenge. So I do a lot of, I find a lot of local wood sources, guys around here who have salvaged, you know, wood from, you know, all over uh, Southeast Michigan and they mill it they dry it and then i purchase it from them i did just have um <clears throat> a guy come out and mill up some logs for me so that was a lot of fun i had a a lady had a walnut tree in her backyard and asked if i wanted the wood and i told her well as it stands i can't do a whole lot with it right now because i don't have the equipment but hey if uh you want me to build a table and you want to get it out of here and we'll get it milled and dry we can do that and she was like, you can build a table out of this? I'm like, yeah. So so I had a friend of mine, Terra Shape Tree Service, um, great guys. They went and cut the tree down. And then uh, another company called, and they brought it to my house. And then last week, uh, another company called 315 Milling out of here in Howell. They milled it for me. And now it's going to sit on the property for a while for, you know, not, I don't know, probably like nine months or so and then get it in the kiln and, uh, Next year, I'll be able to turn it into our dining table. So it's uh, it's so pretty fun. Cool. That's awesome. Now I kind of now I kind of feel bad that I took all the trees that fell down during that tornado and just <laughs> cut them up and threw them in my fire pit. Could have had a table. Damn it. Damn. Way to go. Where were you a year ago? Besides not doing this. I wasn't doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I was just starting. I I was just building a coat rack. <laughs> 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 even then i could have used a coat rack yeah yeah exactly Man, every time we always meet the best people that i actually need like right after i finish doing something that i probably yeah. could have used them for cleaning lady though i can always use yes yeah that one that i still gotta work on um so what is your favorite thing about your business honestly being my own boss being able to like i've always been i guess i've always had this in the back of my mind like I why do I have someone else tell me what to do all the time and I have to be here 
And if I need to take a day off for, you know, my wife has something going on or a doctor's appointment, I got to go, oh, can I please have this day off and like feel guilty about it? Mm -hmm. I'm just sick of that shit, dude. Like, I'm just sick of it. I tell my kids all the time what they have to do, but I don't want them to grow up and think that like they have to be told what they have to do the whole time for the rest of their life. Like, so that was part of this leap I did. Was I was like, you know, I really don't want my kids to think this. And I just decided to go for it and quit my job last year. And August will be one year of not having someone else tell me what to do, uh, except for my kids. <laughs> well, I was going to say, let's be honest. And you have a wife, so she probably still tells you just a little bit what to do. Right? Oh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but, you know. And you do exactly as she asks, right? Just, you know, if she watches the podcast. He does exactly as he's told. I'm working on that. I, I got to get a little better. But, um, I love, though, that you don't want to ask permission to, so you can, like, you know, take care of your family and you don't want your kids to see that they should have to ask permission to take a vacation or, you know, to be there for a school thing for their kids. I, oh, my gosh. That's why I, I mean, that's how I ended up here, too. So, yeah, it's a lot of work. You know, it's, it's a lot. You guys know, you know, like Fourth of July, I'll be working, you know, <laughs> but I'm so will we. <laughs> Chances are good. <laughs> you know, like I'm not getting paid time and a half or anything, so I guess I'll be working. You know, but um, the other thing is like, I don't know. I you know I love being outdoors. I grew up. Um, my parents. It wasn't their land, but there was a little under a hundred acres behind them that was free roaming land, and that's what I grew up on. So I think something about just. I love being outdoors and working, you know, with, you know, trees, something about that. I really enjoy. I, I can't really tell you exactly what it is, but like, it's like, there's so many variables that go into nature and the way the trees are shaped and the grain. And if the, you know, wood isn't properly dried, it's just going to go crazy on you. There's just a lot of things you can screw up. And I enjoy learning that aspect and, so far, it hasn't bit me in the ass. I've got all five star <laughs> reviews. Hopefully, no one calls me and says, "Hey, my table just blew apart and warped like crazy." And, you know, but you know, that's that's part of the game. That's how you're gonna learn. So you're just you're gonna no, mess no return up. policy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that almost sounds like there's like a legacy to the tree. Like there's a story of this tree getting bigger and then growing, and now it's uh, as somebody's decorative piece in their dining room. Each yeah. piece well, there is a story, is. and especially as you're custom building it, you kind of get to accentuate that story, right? There is. There, um, it's actually, you said that we had this um, big elm tree in our backyard that has, um, it's been dead for the last couple of years, needed to get it cut down. And I knew this guy was coming out to mill, and I'm like, you know, let's cut this down. So we cut that down. I milled it. It was gorgeous. A beautiful, beautiful piece of wood or you know beautiful tree in the center fortunately it did have some cracking through it so i'll have to you know try to do some magic on that but that's what we're going to use for our dining table and you know coffee tables and i'm just gonna you know we got some pictures taken of that um before we cut it down with the family and now mm -hmm. it's just you know a two foot stump my wife's gonna plant flowers in so she'll always kind of have a memory and then eventually you know in a year or so i'm gonna turn that into more our furniture i mean my kids are gonna beat the crap out of it but whatever i'll just you know that's just part of it i was gonna say that's kind of the best part right it still continues to support the family right yeah oh, this and is making me all emotional what is going on today <laughs> God, I feel like I need freaking therapy before we do these podcasts anymore. I think we need it after. <laughs> well, we probably need therapy before, during, and after. But I just, I, I think the story behind, like, the pieces that you're building are really, is really unique. So, I mean, whether it's pulling something from, like, your grandmother's house and this tree that came down or this tree that you ran around or had a tree fort in and now you can't be in it, but you can sit around it for dinner. Like, there's... Oof. Yeah, all my marketing, yeah. my marketing spidey senses are going off right now. <laughs> I mean, this this is this is common. This is what people have been doing for years. So I'm not the only person doing it. That's for sure. You know, <laughs> like I'm just I'm learning. I mean, I'm learning, but and I'm learning. That's what I love about the woodworking community, too, is like, you know, I, I feel like we're not. What am I trying to say? We're like 
we all kind of want to help each other out. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, I'm way better than this guy down the road because I'm not. You know, I'm not going to sit there and say, you suck. You don't do this. Like we have local people around here that technically would be competition. And they, you know, some of them are doing it longer than me. And they're like, oh, Cody, you should really do this because blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh, thanks a lot. I didn't realize that, you know, and we kind of all feed off each other and help each other out. I mean, it's not just cutthroat industry where, you know, I'm not going to say this guy sucks. And he, you know, that's one thing I really like about it too. Or just, I mean, of course it's competition, but. <laughs> Collaboration know, or... over competition. My newest tattoo. That'll be my next one, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, because I need one more, clearly. Um, where do you see your business or where do you want your business to be in about three to five years? I'm still trying to figure that out because I feel like, you know, I've only been in business for a year. And, you know, a year ago, I would not have thought, hey, I'm going to be doing a podcast with someone and I'm going to get a tree cut down and get that turned into a table. I was not, that's not where my head was, you know? So it's like, I feel like, you know, every few months I'm expanding more and expanding more I'm inside, you know, it's I'm like opening my mind more, but, and I think what I would really like to do <clears throat> is because of the stories that you were just talking about, like, I, um, you know, we have a, I have had a cabin up in Ross common area. It's been in my family since I think 56, there was, um, there used to be a sawmill built behind there. All the wood came from the sawmill it was all built right there. And, uh, this past year, there was a small red Oak tree that got, um, fell down mm -hmm. and, <clears throat> you know, it was small, what it what, well, the part we took home cause we manually lifted it. Three of us. We Oof. took we took that home and threw it in my truck, and my cousins were like, "Dude, this is really is this really worth taking?" And I'm like, "It is. Come on." So we took it, and now I just got four beautiful slabs out of it, and I'm like, "And there's a lot more of it up there," but I'm like, "Man, I could turn this into a piece and take it back up to the cabin, you know, once I'm all done." So what my point, I guess, what I'm trying to say here is, I think I would love it if my business shifted towards. People were contacting me saying, hey, I have this beautiful tree in my property or what, what, and I'm, I'm the guy. I got a tree service that helps me. I have, you know, that's what I do is pretty much take their trees and turn it into furniture. Like, cause a lot of it right now, um, I'm going around buying wood, you know, which is fine. Yeah. I'm supporting all these other local woodworkers doing this stuff. So I have no problem with that, but I just think that would be really cool to every single piece i built had a story you know so that's kind of where i'd like and of course not working out of my not working out of my garage my 24 <laughs> by 24 garage but it's a little snug <laughs> but we're making it work so what do you feel like your, is your biggest struggle right now in business calls have been coming in i'm getting a lot so just just really really i think more time management on my part i am doing a lot more video content and putting more things out there but like the doing all the social media doing all that it's, it is very stressful for me you know it, it's that's stress that i have you know in the shop it's stressful too but i enjoy this like i enjoy learning all of this and i even enjoy learning the social media but it's just like every day like when i started this i didn't realize like Hey, by the way, you got to learn how to video edit and you got to learn how to market and you got to do this shit like You mean you didn't start a business to go do marketing for it? No, I Hold I on. <laughs> what the shit is that? Like <laughs> I knew I knew that's what I was going to have to do, but I guess I didn't realize like every single night and then out here half the time, oh shit, I got to set up the camera. So that's like it's just the thing that I don't want to have to do all the time, you know, but that's just kind of where it is for now, you know, and we'll see what happens down the road. I, I, I know some video content people now, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes down the road, you know, but um, that's just, I would say the main struggle um, and getting people on the phone. A lot of people say, Hey, can you give me a rough quote, rough quote? 
and I'm like, man, it, it's, it's really hard to do because I, I don't do, I don't like to just give quotes out over the phone, you know, that's not, or over a text message. There's a lot of variables at play. You know, do you want, do you want legs from this custom fabricator guy down the road? Or do you want to go buy a set of legs yourself on marketplace? Cause I like to work around everyone's budget the best that I can, but yeah. I'm on, I'm not in the budget with everyone, which is okay. But I still want to help them in some way. Like, Hey, go, why don't you go check this out? But a lot of people don't want to get on the phone and they don't want to tell you their budget because I think they're, they're afraid you're going to, if they say my budget's $5,000, well, you're going to charge them $5,000. For example, someone called me yesterday. They're starting a business. Their logo is, um, <clears throat> the, it's uh, 52 wealth management. Um, shout out to them, but their logo is shaped of a tail of a whale. So it kind of mm -hmm. wants a table to look like a, a tail whale pretty much. And I'm like, yeah, we can do that. I'm like, I got a metal guy that can, you know, you know, probably make legs that will look like that. I'm like, but it depends on your budget, you know? And he comes at me with, Hey man, that's what I want. That'd be badass. Whatever it is, it is. So something like that is things that we can do. But if you're not willing to like, let me know about your budget at all. Like mm -hmm. I, I can't go to this guy and say, Hey, give me $2,000 worth of legs. <laughs> you know? So yeah. I struggle getting people on the phone and they don't want to tell me their budget. And, um, because I think a lot of people think, well, if I say my budget's five thousand dollars, you're just gonna charge me five thousand dollars, you know. But and a lot of guys might, you know. I'm I'm pretty honest with people. I had a uh, I had a lady reach out to me and she wanted this live edge table in a bonus room. The bonus room does not have any climate control, so no AC, you know. And it's a summer cottage here in Michigan. And she's like, so it's oh, I got a few cold all the time. What's that? So it's hot and cold and the humidity all the time. And yeah. And she told me she got a few quotes and she wants live edge, which is like subject to warping more than other, you know, types of cuts. And I told her, I'm like, well, has anyone talked to you about this going to warp on you? And she's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I could do things, but it's going to warp. Like I could put big C channel bars in it, but I'm telling you, you're gonna spend a lot of money and it's still going to warp. Like, you know, mm -hmm. there's, unless you have some type of climate control in there, like eventually it's going to warp. And she's like, oh, no one told me this. And I'm like, I'm like, you wanna pay me two, $3,000 to do it, but I don't recommend it. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> she's like I cannot believe that. And I'm like, so, things like that. I'm not going to screw you over. <laughs> you know, like, And you do your best, but there's only so much that you so much flexibility you have. Yeah. So where all are you playing right now in terms of marketing? If that's kind of like the big thing that feels like it's a big energy suck for you, where all are you playing to kind of, I guess, mess around with and, and getting traction? 95% of my marketing, I would say I use my personal Facebook page, which seems to help a lot. Um, I do the business account as well through Instagram, but I don't have personal through Instagram, but that's where mainly it is. I speak to, and through Facebook, I've met a lot of people like you guys, and then a lot of, uh, you know, referral groups and connected with people even from high school. And like, I've never used Facebook really in my life until the last year. So I've never been computer savvy. That's, that's just not what I've ever done. So, um, I've learned a lot and it is, you know, what takes you five minutes literally will probably take me an hour. So for me to try to learn like TikTok and this and just all the 5,000 different platforms out there, I, I'm not doing it. Like I'm doing the best I can and it's, you know, I'm, I'm still using Facebook way more than I care to, but you know, it's, that's what you got to do and it's working. Um, I would say that's pretty much the, my main source of marketing, you okay. know, and just, talking, talking, meeting random people and talking. <laughs> Do you have a website, a YouTube channel? Any yeah, of those things? no, I have a website and it's um just my business name, which is capsartistry.com. Um, I don't have a YouTube, but I do um, like on my personal Facebook, I do a lot of <clears throat> videos. Like I just, if you check that out and I, you know, try to mix it up as well, but that's the main thing. Um, as far as what I was just telling you, 
as well. I'm in a group called the Woodpreneur Network, and it's a group of different woodworkers and the lumber community and, you know, Sawyers, Sawmill, and all over this uh, country and Canada. And um, Steve Lazier, he's, you know, the head of it, he's an amazing guy. He he got me out of my comfort zone. So shout out to him. Like he, his whole goal is, you know, pretty much to help most people like me just are, we want to, we're introverts. We want to stay in our little bubble. And he got me out of my low mind said, Hey, dream big dude. Like, <laughs> so this group has been amazing for me. It's changed a lot about not only my business, but like my mind, like, I don't need to stick to the same two friends I've had for the last 20 years. I can meet new people through the internet and still be cool, like friends. So it is funny how starting a business does that. It kind of forces you to expand into different circles that you wouldn't normally have. Yeah. I mean, like, there's no way you and I would have yeah, met. Yeah, like, <laughs> for real. Man, so what this really sounds like is all. I'll use our friend Mary's term. Uh, it sounds like you have kind of the social media monster on your back. This is just this big overarching, like scary thing that, you know, especially people in your space don't want to do. So what it sounds like is you need to find a way to streamline this, you know, while, while you can't necessarily invest in working with a full service digital marketer, you know, it, I think for this next year or so, you really have to find a way to streamline what you're doing and kind of lay it out for yourself. That way you just like sit down and plan it one day and then you're good to go for the rest of the month. Bulk scheduling to sounds like it's going to be one of your biggest assets. I mean, if you're sitting down every single day feeling like, oh crap, I have to go do a post or I have to make a video. Instead, focusing on, okay, so if I plan out my week or my month, and I know I need to do two videos a week and I'm going to do three posts in between. And it's going to be, you know, quotes about wood or pictures from other people or testimonials and breaking it out and literally building it into a calendar. So, you know, either every day that you have to post or being able to plan ahead with what video footage you need. So you don't feel like you're scrambling or, oh my gosh, I got started and now forgot to set up the camera. The other piece that might come in handy is actually just having a camera permanently set up and you just yeah. go hit play ever or you know record every single time you're working. You're going to get a crap ton of footage and and it's going to feel like you're slogging through a lot, but even things like time-lapse videos and all of those things where you just automate like I know I've got to have all this content, just do it every single day, then pull the pieces and more importantly on the days that maybe you're not working or dear god, what if you took a vacation day? I know Maybe not on the 4th of July, but any other day, you could actually pre-plan and have it pre-edited. So you're sitting down and you're maybe editing video once a week or once a month and just spacing out the footage. Yeah, I I, I have been thinking the very like similar. I'm like, I, I have to schedule. I have to have a plan. And like I originally kind of created like a content calendar and I was like, okay, Mondays, I'll do a motivational thing. Wednesdays, I'll do this. Friday, I'll do business and then random stuff in between. But I didn't stick with it. Yeah, it just, I didn't. So that's on that me. That's the I hardest part for most business owners, really. It is. You're not alone. That consistency is really hard. Yeah. Like, that's why, like, I, so with any of our plans, like, even if we're, if we're doing it for you, we have a three month minimum. Because it takes a long time, you know, it, it just to gain traction. But once you've put in those 90 days, it all goes downhill from there. It's all exponential. Mm -hmm. Okay. What I would also like to ask is this whole thing with people wanting quotes over the phone and people not, you know, giving you enough information and things like that. Um, I, I would ask... If looking at your online presence, would they really know that? No, I guess you're right. No, I don't. Yeah. Because that's the thing that a lot of people take for granted is we can use social media to teach people how to communicate with us mm -hmm. and also how to work with us as well. Like, Cody, let me let me ask you this. You've seen a lot of my content. Do I look cheap to work with? No. <laughs> I don't know. Would you assume that, 
you know, you can just up and buy a video, you know, and like have no idea what it is or anything. And you just say, I want a video. Does it look like I would do that? No. <laughs> and, and why is that? Because you have a system you want to create, you, you want your ROI, like you need to make sure your skill set's going to work. So you need to have all the information and kind of like, I need to have their information, but you want to build the best video as you can, right? And chances are your, your buyers are probably looking at something custom for the very first time. So they have no idea what the process looks like. And let's be honest, general consumers hate leading with phone calls. We just yeah. do. Feeling like I have to jump on the phone with a real life person when I already feel like I'm not educated on something feels really scary. So when you're, if somebody's texting you going, hey, I need a price for this, we're potentially kicking tires, but also we don't know what to ask yet. So part of your social plans could be, here's what it looks like to work with us, or even putting some pricing around, like this is what a $5,000 table looks like, and here's the process it takes to build it. Right, you know? I love that idea. I think, I think showcasing, like you have these beautiful pieces, okay, but what does it take to make it? And then what does it cost? So it gives somebody a baseline. Like if you see this table and it's, this is everything I want, well, starting point, it's 5K. And it's okay to say that number, especially when they're showing the value of the completed piece. I wouldn't upfront go like, hey, I just got a commission for a $5,000 table. They'll see it in two years because the wood is drying in their backyard. But, you know, something like that where we can showcase this is what it looks like. I would also offer multiple ways for somebody to give you information and then schedule a call. Yeah. One of the things that we do early on, at least with our clients, is we have an intake questionnaire, right? It has a ton of questions that I would normally ask somebody. It at least gives me a baseline. They may not be able to answer every question, but it gives me an idea of where they're starting from. I'm looking for a table to sit in my dining room. Um, do you want custom legs? I have no idea. I just needed, I just want a table and I want it to look nice. What kind what style is your living or your dining room? Well, it's um, super modern looking. Okay, great. That gives you an idea of where somebody's starting from. So you can have very specific questions. Um, I would also, that's another way to gather information where if somebody's not ready to buy yet, they can at least have another way. You can have another way to contact them later. Maybe you have a table that somebody purchased and they decided they don't want it or they changed their mind or you find, you make a smaller something. You could be sending that out to your entire email list that you've now got gathered and other connection points and offer that to somebody else, whether you're going to offer specials or little things, or if you do ever decide you're bored and you want to get back into like decor items and little trinkets and things, it's another way to get in front of somebody. I have an idea also. So we're actually building this for Prime Edge and it's a, um, it's a lead magnet that's a calculator. So essentially what you could do is put something on your website or on your socials that says, you know, this is roughly what it looks like to work with us. You know, this is the entire process. These are a few examples of the work that we've done and what they cost and why, you know, and maybe even telling them like, this is what you can expect me to ask you. That way when they're in, you know, like I've, I've talked about the buyer pyramid before, like if they are aware that they have a problem, or they're looking for, you know, the solution to their problem, but they're not quite ready to buy yet, that's a great option for them to have to say, okay, what is it going to look like so that I can just do this in bed at, th you know, three o'clock in the morning, but I don't have to talk to anybody and I can find out the info that I need so that when the time comes, I'm more than capable of having that phone call and not looking like a fucking moron and like actually yeah. want to have the call with you. And then they don't have to fully commit themselves. Exactly. Calling and talking to you feels like a commitment. Like, oh crap, we have to yeah. sign something or you're going to, now you have my cell phone number and you're going to call me all hours of the day trying to get me to, to buy the thing we've been talking about when I'm still kind of just dabbling. I'm still kind of looking, you know, these... I think that's awesome. Like the intake questionnaire, a hundred percent. They're actually, um, uh, another woodworker guy. He's, uh, in Tennessee in the group. He just posted something like that. So, it's pretty much a breakdown of, hey, what's your style? Rustic? 
contemporary this you want metal legs you want this what size you put in your dimensions and it gives you a ballpark price and yeah know, i think even a like, starting a starting price is a great I way just, to start like me i have no idea how to do any of that stuff like the computer like i got a and my wife does a great job but she's got a very important job she's busy we got the kids so like i just need to i just got to figure out how, how to do that stuff <laughs> and, <a l> <laughs> and that might be something where at least for that piece it's worth bringing in somebody to just quickly build it when somebody calls you, how often are they really ready to commit or how many often do they, do you feel like they actually have all the information they need about you in order to decide whether you're the right craftsman versus somebody else? I feel like when people call me, they're pretty much ready to commit and they might be somewhat sketchy of me, but by the time we're done with the conversation, they normally want to keep going and proceed. So, I mean, I feel like when they honestly... Like I said, I, I haven't been doing this for years and years, but I'd say probably around 60% people are, you know, if, if I get the phone call, they're normally ready to move forward. I talk mm -hmm. to them and then, yeah. And the video content, you know, I actually had a lady message me a few days ago and um, about like a countertop and she's like, well, she's like, I really want to support you and this, but like, there's not a whole lot. I haven't seen much of this type of work. Um, more dimensional number which isn't a big deal but more of this so i'm not sure this is a higher ticket item i'm like no problem i understand La, da, 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 da. here's what i do the next day i post a video of me doing this wraparound fireplace mantle and then she called. i saw that it was really then, cool <laughs> yeah and yeah but see i'm learning how to video edit i'm not not like you guys but uh, she called me the next day and was like oh hey i decided i want to proceed with you and i mentioned i was like yeah no i just did this she's like i saw that mantle that was so cool like so she was like i think 40 50 percent and then she saw the mantle and then she decided to call me and now i have a meeting with her on friday to go you know, quote it. So, you know, and we kind of do the same thing, you know, like I'll, like, I'll be candid here with this podcast. It, it was very strategic because what we found is at prime edge, people were very hesitant to work with us because we aren't cheap. Um, and they were always hesitant to work with us until they saw the set, like until they saw our team working until they saw all the equipment, you know, and all the, the fancy cool shit that they don't know anything about was when they finally were like, oh, okay, I get it. it. Instead of us just sitting in a meeting and writing shit down and talking and blah, 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 we're actually there doing the damn thing. So for, for me, like this podcast is for people to see, you know, it, well, when they're in studio, um, <laughs> you know, what's, what's going on and get a chance to be in it. That way they can, they can know whether or not this is something that they actually want to do. Yeah. Um, but also they have a way better look into what it's actually going to look like. So I think if you can find a way to just continuously show your other work, then you can start saying to people like, you know, if they're just like, yeah, I don't really know what you do. Like, I just heard that you do custom woodworking and, you know, I haven't actually seen any of your pieces because that's what you're going to get a lot of is like in in the process going through like, oh, okay, we're finally getting to price. And they say, I got to think about it because I haven't really seen any of your custom work. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Go check out my socials. I posted every day this week of something that I did. The right. other pieces, if you're going to increase the number of leads, like using something like that, um, like the tool to figure out pricing or whether you're going to do a little bit more with lead generation that way, there is no possible way that as you're working in your business, you're going to be working on your business. So moving things from cell phone call to dig other digital means of communication, think email, that's going to be really important. But building a nurture series is like the, one of the very first things that comes to mind for me. Think of it like you can either do it in video form or you can do it in you know, email written form, but something that when somebody gives you their contact information, 
they start getting sort of like a get to know you set of emails. These would be things like, here's what I do. Here's what my workshop looks like. Here's some of my favorite pieces. And it showcases, I mean, one of diff- each different style or a table versus a counter versus a mantle showing different things that you can do. Because if somebody's maybe not ready to do a table, but they see a mantle going, oh my gosh, that would be amazing. I want a mantle instead, but I didn't realize he did it. Those kinds of things like building up that rapport, building up that recognition so that when somebody is ready to go, they know all the things that you do and how the process works. That would also help with, we're going to have to sit on a call. You're going to have to get past it, right? You're going to have to talk to me, but here's some great tools and ways for me to get to know you a little bit. And here's all the things you should know about me. So that they're very comfortable when you talk to them, that they know who you are, what is important to you. I mean, even things like mission videos is one of the ways that we build reputation and build comfort with consumers. Doing something like that through email and through multiple touch points is going to be really powerful for you, especially if you're going to lean into staying with your personal Facebook being your primary mode of communication. Well, so let me ask, the majority of the people I talk to, all I have is their Facebook contact and I try to get past that. So like, how would I even do something like that when I only, I always add them. Anyone that messaged me, I try to friend, friend, friend request. I can't say request apparently, but you know what I'm trying to say. And uh, then I might like, I start like bombing their page. I do the best I can to get them to see me. But like for what you're saying, we have, you know, my wife, we, we, she set up the email for, we're trying to get, we, we don't have a system for that yet, but for like a Facebook, how would people even. If they're in your DMs, so, just ask. Well, there's that. But also, do you know how you got in my email list? I don't remember. No, you don't remember. It was because I asked you for your email to send you a call invite. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right after that, I was able to add you to our email list and then you started getting our stuff every week. Right. So just something as simple as that. But I also agree with Alicia. Just ask if they're already in your DMs, like you might as well. I was going to say, and if the lead is already there, if they're already showing interest saying, you know what? I want to make sure I don't lose this in my, in my DMs. Can you drop me an email and ask them to send you something? Because then you still capture the email. That's what Um, I have been doing lately. Because the other day I did a post that was, I was like, Hey, I'm trying to sell one more furniture piece by the end of the month. If you refer me or, you know, share this and a job goes through, I'll give you a free free charcuterie board or a hundred dollar Visa gift card. That next day I got 15 leads from it and DMs. And I was like, dude, I can't like keep this shit. Like I'm trying to work and my phone's going off. So I, I have been saying like, Hey, can you send me your, you know, personal contact info so I can put it in my you know, CRM pretty much. So I don't lose your contact. And they're like, yeah, sure. Or some people just ignore it. (laughs) Do you have a CRM system set up? I mean, not, it's just, no, it's just kind of Google that we have that my wife has created like a quotes list and everything for follow-ups and this, but not an actual CRM that woodpreneur network that I do. They have all of that. I'm just on the lower tier. So they're not helping me with that yet. So I would definitely look at doing that, even just to keep track of everything. If we, I can't imagine, actually, I'm pretty sure my business would fall apart if we didn't have a way to manage leads and knowing where they were in process. Like ours are flagged by, um, I have a meeting scheduled, I've sent a proposal, we're in follow-up stage, the job is started, the job is middle of the way through, the job is ended, um, it's archived. Being able to keep track of all of those and then track those by email is going to be really powerful for you to do the follow-ups. And it's also going to make it so that you can turn your phone on vibrate or silent while you're working and less likely to, oh, I don't know, saw a finger off because nobody needs to have a phone vibrate while you're sawing something and all of a sudden you lose a digit. We don't need that. Yeah. Um, But keeping track of it that way and also it's going to allow you to scale. I think everybody's system can be a little bit different. I find that the more things that are automated so it's less actual labor intensive also means it's less likely to break down. So I know you track your clients in a Google doc, which is fine, but I think you're, but you're also collecting things in like a MailChimp account or an email system so that we're tracking those pieces as well. Yeah. Yeah, Like we have a way to, to track leads like through, um, I think we use like Trello for that plus Mm -hmm. like Facebook, uh, messenger, like CRM 
type of thing where it like yeah. labels people. Um, but yeah, as far as our clients, it's just sheets. And that's, and it totally works for you. And as long as the system is there and consistent, the biggest thing is, um, documenting what the system looks like, because if somebody else, if you have to bring somebody else in as an assistant, when you get slammed or, you know, your wife is super busy with her own stuff and you maybe need a little bit of an extra hand, having the system documented so that you can actually go back to it or have somebody else step in and take over some of the pieces or better yet, by documenting it, you actually realize some of the things that could be automated. So like we use a system called Dubsado. I am absolutely obsessed. Shout out to Dubsado. Thank you for creating an app, by the way. That's how we track everything. So anytime I'm creating a quote, that it's all in there and it's all it's all in one separate list. And then I can do all the follow-ups there. When something is confirmed and we're moving forward, it does all of our invoicing for us. It does all of the automations. Those things are really powerful to take away all the extra time that you have going into it. And if you are using some of these, like that quiz or the pricing, um, oh, what did you call that? The calculator. The, there we go. The pricing calculators out there and you're using it as a lead capture. If you get those results and they actually could sit in there, you could follow up with any additional questions that are in there. You can follow up and use that as a quoting tool and then converting that calculator answer to a quote and going, Hey, I wanted some more information. I know the range said five to $9,000. Um, answer a couple questions for me and I can probably give something a little bit more straightforward or I'll give you something firmer. How does that sound? Right. And it's, it's converting the interest to an actual lead. Yeah. Well, and also like, yeah, put it behind a, um, an email wall that way, like you'll also know if you, you know, if you do really well with it, you'll know if you've got competitors that are looking at your stuff mm -hmm. because they are going to put their emails in as well. Um, well, I have to see, they pretty much, I'm asking because I don't know, the customer would have to put their email address in to be able to see the pricing. To code. get their pricing, exactly. All and right. it's just, it's one extra step. Somebody who's actually interested is going to put their email address in. Right. Right. So it's it's a little bit warmer than somebody who is just, you know, kicking the tires and I'm curious how much you're charging. And your competitors are going to go look at that too. And I say competitors loosely. I know you guys are a tight knit community and it's not always like that, but you occasionally have the person who's like, what? He's busting the seams with work. Why is he doing so well? And it's seeing things like that. It gives them a little bit of a peek behind the curtain, which you're welcome to share when you're ready, but not by, but that allows you to share that versus mm -hmm. them just being able to kind of tear your system apart. There's one last thing that kind of comes up when we were talking, um, depending on where you see wanting your business to go, I would highly recommend shifting to doing a business page on Facebook. I know that a lot of your communication goes through your personal. I know all of your videos going up there, which is amazing. But if you ever need to expand, if your personal Facebook ever gets locked out, having somebody else as an admin, I mean, I can't, how many clients have we talked to in the last six I months have that have lost a business access? Page. I have a business page, if that's what you're saying. Like, But I would lean into using that versus using your personal. Continue to do right. private communications with your personal, you know, in some of these different groups or referral groups, things like that. But leaning into using your business page as your primary mode of communication for clients is going to be safer. Yeah, I wouldn't normally agree with that because I use my own personal account to do most of what I'm doing and it's verified, so I can't you know, just have it taken away. Uh, however, I still am like in the process of switching over to all of our business pages just because it, like Alicia said, it is a little safer. And it adds credibility. Um, it adds how is, a how is it safer? What do you mean? How is it safer? I guess I'm confused. So like, on a business page, safer, you can have, or? on a business page, you can have multiple admins, right? So I can have, if I really wanted to, I won't let him in, but I could have Parker as an admin on my page and I have my VP as an admin on my page. So if for any reason my personal Facebook gets shut down, let's say I go do something stupid on social and I get locked out for four oh, days. Oh, yeah. I all see. of a sudden my business doesn't stop just because my personal account is locked out. Instead, I can have somebody else be able to go in there, monitor messages, go in and talk to people. It's really, really... It's really, really scary to lose access. We've had people recently lose access to their business pages because they were the only admins on their account. I've had to rebuild multiple Facebook presences because they lose access. That's something um, I have not even thought about. Like I have tried so hard to like 
reach out to people and post daily and you know add friends and if all of a sudden i lost that i'd be fucked <laughs> exactly and that's what we're trying to help you prevent that's the other reason think about that that's the other reason we recommend being on multiple platforms, yeah. not just Meta. So Instagram and Facebook are owned by Meta. If yeah. for any reason Meta locks out, and it's happened. We've lost access to Meta because their servers crash, I think, a half a dozen times now in the past couple of years. If for any reason they get shut down, we don't lose access to our entire business as long as we're on multiple platforms, whether that's cross-posting videos on TikTok or being on email and having access to client lists there, making sure the website has a lead capture. All of those things help to protect your brand and protect your business in case something else happens. We're in a political year and this season always makes me really nervous because if you have a political opinion, if you have, if you're in certain groups, if you're interested in certain hobbies, Parker, (laughs) <laughs> you are more likely to get shadow banned, things hidden from you, your stuff hidden from other people. And the more volatile it gets in the political spectrum, we see more of those random lockouts, Facebook jails, people losing admin access to things. It's just something to help protect yourself by making sure you have backup plans. Yeah, because one, so the best way I've heard this described in my entire business career is don't build your business on stilts. By by building your business on stilts, it's you you have one channel, one avatar, and one product. So if you're selling your one product to your one avatar on your one channel, if your one channel goes down, you have no business. You're going down, yeah. So that's why we always suggest you need to be cross-posting everywhere. It doesn't matter if you didn't create the content for that platform or even if it's not optimized. Now I like it makes me cringe a little bit if it's not optimized because it doesn't take that much. But nonetheless, if you don't have the time, still fucking post like at at the very, very least. Yeah. Like and back to what we were saying originally, like I 100 percent agree. And I didn't even think of Facebook going down. But like I mentally don't know how I could handle learning other platforms and doing the time like I it's just like I and that's reasonable. So maybe you start with just p- creating a TikTok channel, not optimizing it, but just anything that you already created for Facebook or Instagram, post it there as is. Do- right. It doesn't need any additional information. So, if you let use me the ask same you caption. this though, like for TikTok, I don't feel most of my customers are going to be at least forty and up. You know, it's people with with money and. So I feel like TikTok isn't really a best platform for me because I feel like it's a lot of younger. Am I, or am I completely wrong with that? You are completely wrong, unfortunately. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm glad you well, said it and I didn't have to. <laughs> yeah, so m- put it this way. Uh, my mom is, uh, I think, f- I'll just say she's she's almost 50. She's sending me TikToks like nearly every day. Yep. Really? She is on She is on the platform all the time and so are all of her friends. And that's so it. Okay. the the thing is, is TikTok started out as Musical.ly years and years ago, and Musical.ly was designed for kids. And all it really was was kids doing like dances and trends and shit. People really don't even do that anymore. Nope. On on TikTok. I, so that just occurred to me. You're right. They don't. We don't do the TikTok side by side dances and stuff like that anymore. <gasps> no, it's Thank not a God, thing. I don't actually have to learn how to dance. <laughs> so it really, I think, just comes down to like use the platform yourself for a day, even. You know, just learn how it works. Because the thing that I try and tell our clients all the time, and even just our audience on social, is that Even though the platforms may be a little bit different, one, they all use the exact same formula of, you know, swipeable vertical content, Mm -hmm. but they also have one thing in common, and it's that humans all consume the content. So our brains have not changed in a bajillion years. Like, we, we still get random, like if, you know, well, I don't get this because I like public speaking, but if for, <laughs> for people that don't like public speaking, you get up there and you feel like you're going to die. And that's right. the same feeling that you used to get, you know, when you were in the jungle trying to find food and there was a tiger chasing you. You know, it's 
like our brains are designed in the exact same way that they've, you know, been designed for years. So the way that people consume content never changes. It's hook them in, give them a reason to watch, give them a reason to come back. That's it. So when when you're creating content, that's what you need to be thinking about is your end consumer and everything else is going to fall into place. Does that make sense? No, yeah, no, I, I understand for sure. It's, uh, there's a lot. <laughs> it's, well, yeah, and uh, like I say all that to say, it's much easier than it seems. Yes. And yeah, we're not, we're I, I don't think at any point we're asking for perfection. We're not expecting that the thing that you post on TikTok the very first day is going to be the best thing you've ever created, right? I mean, if you look even back at Parker's old videos, his older stuff is not as good as his current stuff. It's just a part of it's just a practice thing. Part of it is learning as you go. And more importantly, like the content itself, the way we consume things, like the the things we look for changes. To your point, we, we're not watching, you know, dance videos anymore. No, we're watching things to be entertained or to, my God, ASMR. If I have to, I, I watch stupid restocking videos on TikTok of people restocking their fridges. It's ridiculous. There's absolutely no value to me. And I watch it because I'm, whoa, look at it go. It could be the exact same way for your content. It's I've wow, learned I like when I first started doing this again, I've only been using social media for like uh, less than a year. Right. Mm -hmm. So at first it was just like, oh, what do I say? And what are this and that? And then like my mentor in the woodpreneur program, like I said, he's like, he told me, he's like, here's the thing. People don't really give a fuck about you. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> they no, don't really, like, they care about like, themselves. That's, that's it. Just, just they're gonna keep scrolling. Just post. It does he's like avoid political shit. I would avoid Thank political God. shit. And I'm not a political person, like I'm more conservative, but I don't really care what you are. We all have our different beliefs, and that's fine. Like, whatever, you know, but like so I avoid certain topics that I think are going to start a lot of confrontation like Parker you were that might be a ballsy move with you with you know the flashpoint I love it some people might think oh gosh look at that you know and that's oh, he's one that's of it. those people yeah that's, <laughs> that's their opinion hey yep. and, and for me like I I don't mind polarizing myself from people that are that close-minded yeah you know but that's also like I am losing business that way Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've I've accepted that because my personal values and beliefs are more important to me than, you know, just money. However, I also agree that like politics don't belong in business. You know, there's there's a lot of different things that you sh probably shouldn't be posting about yourself on your like page that you, I, I was going to say your business page, but even your personal page that's associated with your business. And right. you still can, um, like there's some times where I will post, you know, firearms posts and stuff like that. Cause that's what I'm interested in as, um, like selected friends only can see it, you know, that way the, the people that I know that I don't really want to see it or that I'm not that close with can't see it. Therefore it's not going to be a problem. Yeah. Um, so that's, I guess all I'll say on that. Um, but let's look at the uh, the top three all priorities. All right, so top here. three priorities. Do you want I'm going to record this for a second. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right. We're, we're <laughs> recording it four ways. So yeah, you're, five ways. You're good. Top one. What's the first priority to you? Well, I mean, this isn't my wheelhouse, but you definitely need to find a way to get people's emails and give them some sort of this is what this looks like roughly that they don't have to get on the phone with you for. I'm talking FAQ videos. I'm talking a process video, a mission video. Um, in fact, I think a mission video would be its own priority, like just to give people a look into what it looks like to work with you. You look expensive as fuck when you, yeah. you know, when, when you're filmed cinematically. Um, but it, also will get rid of a lot of tire kickers as well. You know, if you look expensive, the people that are looking for a deal are not going to want to consult with you because they know it's going to be a waste of time. Right. Um, so I think that's your top two priorities. Yeah, I would because... say getting getting communication off of just social. Yeah. Um, what, what, and that can be anything, realistically, but getting it off of just being on Facebook communication, emails. I know you do texting and everything too, but 
Like I would look at an email specifically. And then I do, I agree. I think there's, God, I really hate admitting that somebody needs video, mostly because it makes you smirk every time. But I think there's a almost like a, pro, to me, it's like a process and a mission video. You're so passionate about what you do and why it's unique and what you, what, what it serves, right? That I think you could almost merge that what it's like to do a project with us with a mission video. I also think that if you could get some people on camera that you've made, you know, tables or, you know, whatever for. What trying to do, yeah. Yeah, and get them to say like, this was the most amazing thing that, you know, I've I've ever seen. Like this solved all of my issues or, you know, whatever they're getting that for. Bring out that emotion and get them to tell the world why you are fucking amazing. The, uh, and honestly, doubling down on that as you start to get into more of these legacy pieces. So I think of like the family who just lost their grandmother or a matriarch, right? And there's this tree in her backyard. And you know what? Now every one of her kids is going to get a small end table from this tree, right? So tell the freaking emotional story. I, we like, love, I just got chills. Like, yeah. We love, <laughs> we, I mean, we all are naturally seeking an emotional connection. We are human, so we are, I mean, realistically, we don't make rational decisions. We make emotional decisions, and then we find logic to back it up. So tell the emotional story so that they can use that. Uh, they can, Then they can give them, the, then you give them the logic pieces to back up the decision. Right. I mean, something like that, oh my gosh, that's that video alone, you'd be backed up for years. Yeah. You would have oh, clients boring. going, I need you to go cut this tree down tomorrow. Because I need to have this story. I need to have this piece. I mean, that's like I said, that's my end goal because I mean, I just, I think that story is really cool. I mean, it's, but it's, I think a, lot money. You it's a lot of money it. too, but I just think it's cool to have that. You know, I'll have, like I said, furniture from this tree in my backyard where I'm raising my family. And I, you know, took part of that log from our cabin. That's so it is cool. I mean, um, I think that I right think, there though is just. Oh, if that's the direction you want to go in, though, I would lean heavily towards getting at least one of those professionally done, mostly because we know there's a cost. We know there's additional costs with having to do milling, with having to have it cut down. And there's a ton of time in it, right? Because that wood has to dry and then we have to we have to dry it, you know, more than just what we can do outside. I think that needs to be more of your professional grade video because we're obviously there's a cost. There's a process involved. But the emotional story is going to be so much better told from a cinematic perspective than anything we could possibly do on this. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, it's just it's not the same. And the thing about, the, like, I don't do those every day. You know, it's, I've only done the one other than my own <laughs> that we're doing. So it's hard to say, oh, yeah, let's do a video and let's do that today. I got to find that customer, you know. Screw that. This. Do it yourself. Tell yours. So what's that? Tell, tell yours. So. Do the do the one for for the cabin. Tell that right. story, even in a professional video, because what that will do is not only show that there's a story here, but that you care about the story. So mm-hmm. when you're creating a piece, you care as much about that legacy piece as anybody because you get what it feels like. Actually, I think it's almost more powerful to have you do it than to have your first customer do it. Yeah, like I even seeing you get like emotional on camera, I think would be fucking sweet. Or have your wife tell the story or, you know, the and then I just imagine like the kids playing at the table and yes, they're going to beat the hell out of it and they're painting pictures on it and there's probably acrylic paint on something because, you know, a kid got the wrong paint. Swear to God happens every single time to my table. But <laughs> honestly, the fact that it's messy and dirty and it, but it's something that's standing the test of time, just like the tree was. Oh my goodness. Like so that. Let me ask you this. That's not even something that. I can't, like, I just cut this lumber down. I can't do that for at least a year. But I do talk like, you know, hey, like I've been saying on like Facebook, like, hey, we're getting this tree cut down for Tiffany, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, a little time went by. Hey, we're getting this milled, tree milled up finally. And now it's going to sit here. So it's just not like, it's not a story I can do in a day. It's like a year, at least a year and a half process. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's okay. And I think that adds more value. And you can tell the story long term. So 
you know, you just had, she had the tree cut down a few months ago. It was just milled, you know, a couple weeks ago. That's okay. It's and almost like the to be continued story. But then when it's done, you get a professionally made video of one of them. Yeah. Like it doesn't maybe have to be tomorrow, but when you get to, when you get it, the piece done, it's time to really tell the story and do it in a very visual way in a very professional way, because that's going to level up what people expect the quality to be. It's going to level up what people expect you to be. And it's going to really pull in that, those emotional heartstrings. No. Yeah. That makes sense for sure. I mean, that's the thing. Like I am good at what I do. I'm not good at what you do, you know? So Mm -hmm. like I've talked to a few people about you guys, like, yeah, what do you think? And you know, about doing this and I'll be honest with you, man, Parker, I wouldn't have given you my email if I wasn't interested at all. You know, I've just, I, you've talked to me a couple of times. I'm straightforward with you. <laughs> like, but like, I, like, I've been told like, nah, I don't, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't pay them for that. I would do it yourself and put it in a Canva template and blah, 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 blah. blah. But it, it, at the end of the day, for me, it's like, I don't want to do that. And I'm not going to do nearly enough good of a job on this. Cause I don't have four cameras set up and I don't have all of this. Like, I know yet you have to invest in your company, even in areas you don't want to, to become bigger and a bit better. Like I might have to VA, hire a VA to do things. I don't want to do that, but I might have to. I might have to hire a video content creator. I don't want to pay you, you know, X amount of money to do that. But your hiring you guys might sell me a couple tables. And let's say I do it all myself on my phone. Maybe I get something, maybe I don't, but the chances of you guys doing it are higher. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm not interested right at this moment, but I want you to know I'm definitely totally right interested. <laughs> <laughs> interested. So you, we didn't, you didn't tell him there was a contract signing right after this. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> I'm uh, kidding. Of course. No, but what I will say too, is to those people that are saying that to you, just realize that by taking that extra step, you are going above them and what they are willing to do. And these are the people you are asking advice from. So if if they won't, then what does that say about the person who is willing to do it? That means yeah. that you are willing to go the extra mile. And that tells me as a potential customer that holy shit, this guy is going to do a little bit extra. Yeah. So even though he's 10 times more expensive than homie down the street, he's still going to do a better job. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I know what you're saying, but I would have to disagree as far as these people because these are the people that have like really think way expanded my mind big time. <laughs> and, it's <laughs> not, and it's not to say that that any or all of their advice isn't valuable. Right. It's really just like a if you if you think of that video that we just talked about, right, with telling the story of the table from your from your cabin. If none of them would do it, but you see the value in what we're describing, that's the difference between making it from your for yourself and from your cell phone than leveling up to the quality and offering the quality that the video would offer, right? It's mm-hmm. the it's the perception to a consumer. So if I now see what it means to to have you tell my family story in woodworking. And I can see that in a way that feels emotional. I feel like to a degree, you understand what it's like when I get that table or I get that item and I'm going to ugly cry, right? Like it's going to be a very emotional moment for me because it's my grandmother's tree or it's from my family cabin. But I'm going to understand that you understand how important this is. And not every, not, and not every piece is going to be this way. You don't need to do this for every single item you do. But if what you want to build are legacy items and legacy products, this is how you'll tell that story better than, you know, the the quick little shorts or the reels that you would normally create on your own. So I'm not saying don't invest or only invest in having video production done professionally. I'm saying maybe one or two pieces. And not tomorrow, necessarily. Yeah. I mean, as much as it breaks my heart, I agree. Um, (laughs) Does it break your heart because I said it? Or does it break your heart because I said you don't have to do it tomorrow? All of the above. (laughs) So priority number three to me would be formalizing your CRM process. Um, Working, and it, it still can be on a Google Doc. It can. 
I obviously am biased because I love the system that I use, but I also built it to work perfectly for me and my and my my team. Right. Um, but formalizing the process for gathering information, getting them the information, and then following up with them outside of just, well, we have a list and I will go email them when I'm bored. And instead having a system that automates some of that and then making sure that anything you're any of those leads that you capture, especially as you get off of just using social. Um, is going to be really, really important because you're going to see an influx of people, which is the goal. We want an influx of leads, but if your system can't manage more people, it's going to, it's going to be right now. Like other than this past week, you know, I'm constantly reaching out, trying to find people. They're not like coming to me all the time where I'm like, Oh, I need a CRM. I can't keep up, blah, blah, blah. But like at the same time, I waste a lot of time doing that. So something like you said, dubs auto, Right. It's Dubsado. Yep. It, D U B S A D O. Make sure you send me my check, Dubsado. I actually have no idea if they have a referral program. I don't know. I thought you were an affiliate. Huh. I never send anybody that. I always just send, I just say, I love it and go buy it yourself. I don't know. It's, uh, it's essentially like a QuickBooks to all of your contacts and what you have. It really uh-huh. is. I mean, actually, you saw it for the first time only like a week ago and yeah. like what the back end looks like from my end and the way we've built it. And I mean, how much time it saves us and follow up and just ooh, all of it. And then honestly, the way it does invoicing and keeps everything in line, workflows, ooh, it makes my life so much easier. But honestly, I, however it makes sense for you to do it, whether that's, you know, on Mondays, we do a quick email send out to everybody in here. This is what you can look forward to on socials this week, whether that is a follow up at the 10 day mark of you giving somebody pricing, some way that you can build in a process for not only keeping track of it, but following up because you don't want it to be where you're only reaching out to them when you're broke or when you're not busy. Right. You want it to be consistent because it will help keep you consistent and to a point, if you stay consistent, you're not going to have time to do it unless you automate some things or find better systems. So we've gotten the top three. We think the best things were to um, connect with them outside of just Facebook, right? Yep. And honestly, sh- at the part of that is shifting to the business page just to protect the brand and the assets. Second thing was some some high quality video pieces because it'll help show the quality and the value that you bring to the table. And third one is formalizing a CRM process. So those are, those are our big three? Yeah, I agree. Okay. Does that all, I mean, from your perspective, Cody, does that all make sense? No, absolutely. I mean, the I'd say the only two, I, or only one I haven't thought of after was the shifting. Like, I know I should be on more platforms, um, but the thought of losing my Facebook in general, like I didn't even like that didn't cross my mind. Like there's a lot of people I connect with on there and that I would just be screwed. (laughs) So, so what questions do you have for us that maybe we didn't cover or things that weren't clear? Why are you guys doing this? The podcast or like living? Yeah, no. Why'd you start a podcast? (laughs) That's a great, we've never been asked about us. This is actually freaky. That's kind of freakish. (laughs) Um, to be honest, we do this shit anyway. Like yeah. we will sit down and we'll talk. We'll, we'll just, well, it's usually over a cocktail and not over coffee cups. But I mean, we kind of spitball strategies for different businesses anyway. And what occurred to us is that we have a bunch of people that maybe aren't ready to work with us, but that could get some help from one, some extra publicity and some extra exposure, but also from just the things that we were already doing anyway. You know, I have a 5,000 person audience. So so do you, I think. We've got, uh, yeah, between the different platforms, we've got about four to five, I think. Yeah, so like putting your face in front of 10,000 fucking people. I mean, that's, if if you live in West Michigan, that's the capacity of Van Andel Arena. With with that, I think just the, the combination of being able to help them project their story and what they do and get their face out there and show some damn personality... Mm-hmm. Um, along with just them, you know, not having as much marketing knowledge as we do um, and us wanting to talk about it anyway and, you know, like talk a bunch of shit as we do. Um, we just thought that it would be more fun to talk shit to people in person. Actually, generally, we just, yeah, it's really just talking shit. Um, and if we're going to do this anyway, we might as well add some value. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, and it helps, but it obviously tremendously helps me, um, you know, whether people see me or not, it's up here. I've learned a lot from today. And then it's more for you guys, 
I'm more likely to say, hey, let's do this video. The more I talk, the more I'm going to trust in you guys and everything else. Like you said, if I was there today, sorry, but if I was there and saw everything, <laughs> I might be sold. I might be like, okay, let's do this right now, which I already am, but it's the principles of I know what I can do and can't do at this moment. <laughs> Certain, it's all fair. I'm, gr I'm trying to grow pretty much with my business and not let my business grow past me, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I am, I guess, nervous to take off too much, but at the same time, that's not a problem I have. Like I, I can't be worried about problems I don't have. Does that make sense? Well, I will say this. Um, you're not going to sneeze and become a millionaire. Exactly. Yes. Oh, that would be nice though. Right? Yeah. Well, like that's the best part. Like this program is like <clears throat> the other one I'm in is like, someone's like, well, I'm worried about getting too busy, blah, 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 blah. And they will raise your prices. And <laughs> Steve's like, that's always my answer. Yeah. Steve pretty much tells you, he's like, well, you're here because you're worried that you don't have enough business. You're worried about something that isn't even there yet. Like when that time comes, we could cross those paths, but like just expand your mind, go for it, go big, you know? So, but I also think that preparing for that is going to, help prevent you from being too busy. So yes, I don't agree. Like let's not sit and spin over. Oh my God, what if I get too busy? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. But instead going, okay, so what things are wasting my time when I'm busy? Well, exactly. it's editing content or it's, man, I, I can't send an email or I didn't follow up with all of these leads. If those are the things that are time sucking away from when you are busy, then those things have to go away. And that's all we've really talked about today. Like we, when we talk six to 12 month plan, I don't expect that in a year you're going to have the same issues that you have today. You, you'll have different ones. You'll have new ones. But if we hedge our bets and we stay a little bit ahead, it just saves us the, the heartache and the stress or the potential loss of business when you do hit that point where you're like, man, I really now don't have capacity to keep up with all of these other things. Or again, you want to take a vacation day. How dare you? You can actually go take a vacation day because some of the things are automated and taken care of for you. Well, and I look at it like if I'm spending $20 or 20 hours a week working on my business stuff, social media, video editing, all that, blah, 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 I'm better off, but I'm just not worth it. I'm not there yet. Like I, I don't have that volume yet. I'm better off paying someone to do that. And then I'll take those 20 hours, whether I take 10 of them with my family and the other 10 building things, I'm going to make more money by building and uh, starting another table out here than I am freaking on social media. <laughs> like, 100%. You know, it's just, it's just common sense. Like you, you cannot do this alone. Like you, you can't, you'll never going to grow if you're just the only one doing everything. So that's why I talk to you guys and, you know, try to make, and I'm glad you did. Month. Like, <laughs> I also know I can't go out and hire five people right now. So I'm still, I'm still greed. So. And you're, I mean, realistically, you are in a phenomenal place for being a year in. I mean, yeah. the fact that you're, that you've already committed to learning new things, that you are being open-minded, that you're, that you're already working with like a coaching program. Um, I mean, Parker and I are both firm believers in hiring the people that know more, working with the people that know more or more experienced and you can always learn something from somebody, but finding that right community, those right, um, those right mentors are so important. You're in a phenomenal place that you're still so open-minded. Most businesses don't make it as far as you have. And you're already thinking further ahead because I think because you committed to learning and because you committed to admitting you don't know what you don't know. A hundred percent. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, that's... I'll get down and say like, oh, I, I need to have a CRM. I need to have this. I need to have this. And my wife's like, shut the fuck up. You were doing Etsy a year ago. You started. So and now you're it is, you like, have to enjoy oh, like, where you were yeah, a year yeah. ago. <laughs> what I will also say is for the audience as well. Um, this like just because you have these things to do does not mean that it has to be done tomorrow. Oh, no. So you can do these things in phases. That's why we give you only three priorities. Um, and they aren't all meant to be executed on at once. They're supposed to be done over the course of six to 12 months. That way you don't fucking bury yourself and burn out before you can even get more customers. Yeah, I would not expect that within a day, I call you tomorrow and you're like, I have a CRM system. Because if you had a CRM system tomorrow, I'd be like, what the fuck were we doing yesterday? 
Yeah. Right. Why, why did I even pitch that one? You already know what you were doing. It just, it takes time. And some of that is just figuring out what works for you. One thing I would like to say to the audience is if you keep pretty much running that same circle path over and over and not taking a different road, you are never going to get out. You know, I, I told Parker this, but like before this, I, you know, thought I was going to take over this cabinet shop and things weren't going out well and i was pissed at life and i pretty much you know come home and drink half the time and indulge in too much and then finally i like you know i had some health shit i had a seizure i decided to quit drinking you know i'm a year in and it was a different road i took and then i decided to quit my job and do this in full scale but if you like just keep if you don't get out of your weekly habits you're you're not gonna grow like and i remember the first thing I sold was a coat rack and it was getting shipped to like um, Colorado and I was on my way to work and I couldn't believe it happened. Like I literally, a, a $94 coat rack and I was crying on my way to work because I was like a fucking door just opened. Like this is a possibility. This is a possibility. And I like call my wife crying like, babe, like I just sold a coat rack for $94. And now... <laughs> I'm going to go bid a table a year and a half later. I'm bidding this table. I'm probably going to bid it for like six grand. <laughs> like, so look at how much you've accomplished in a year. You're, she's absolutely right. I mean, yeah, a year ago you were excited over a coat rack. Right. So I don't know. I'm just saying quit doing the same shit if, and expect a different result. you got to, you got to do something different. <laughs> I would stand up and applaud, but I'm afraid you'd yell at me because I'd tip no, over. No, don't, don't do I that. Mean, 100%. I don't need that. I'm, I'm not trying to be some inspirational dude. I'm just my experience. You don't have to try. You're doing it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it's incredible. I think the things that you're doing are amazing. I think no matter what direction you go in and what advice of ours you take, I think you're, I mean, you're well, you're getting that great trajectory and you're getting that great growth. You're just staying ahead of it by chatting with somebody like us. So we're excited you were here. Thank you so much for uh, for being our guinea pig too with the all virtual one. For real. <laughs> Next time though, I'll, I'll, I'll come in for sure. We'll schedule something. For sure. <laughs> we'll have to have you tell us how what you do over the next few months. Yeah, so, for sure. I would like that. Yeah. But I'm definitely going to, I'm going to start, I'm going to pick one and um, start. Hey, I'm going to do that this month and start with the next month. I'll see what I can do. Just focus on one go all the time to master that master, so to speak. So I actually do it instead of forget it. <laughs> Been there. Well, awesome, man. So where can we find you on the internet? So you can find me, um, capsartistry.com is my website. We have uh, Instagram, Facebook business. I don't know what the hell that panhandle thing's called. I'll be honest, it's something like that, but probably just Google caps artistry. <laughs> um, uh, my personal page, Cody Powers, and uh, yeah, pretty much all my contact info is on our website. So perfect, awesome. Go give Cody your email. Um, <laughs> yeah, please and, uh, subscribe. Uh, We're gonna get start doing free giveaways on things here shortly and discounts. So nice, oh, sweet. I do need a charcuterie board. Yeah. Really? Huh. <laughs> I didn't know that that was a necessity that adults had, but um. And it, I, okay. When have I ever <laughs> pretended to be an adult? I okay, just really fair, like cheese, fair. okay? <laughs> fair enough. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching the, I think this is episode number six of Michigan Marketing in the Morning. Um, so we are halfway through the season because uh, we're doing a, like a, what do we say, 10 episodes? I think, yeah, we're doing 10. Yeah, 10 episodes per season. So if you guys have any further questions for Cody or for us, please leave, uh, please leave those in the comments. And um, if you'd like to be on the show, there's a link below. You can just fill out a um, quick intake form and we'll get you scheduled. And until next time, we'll see you guys later. Yeah.